Hello and welcome to a brief lecture about how to write your problem solving essay. We're going to look at two different aspects of this, some pre-writing issues and then the organizational strategy. Beginning with pre-writing issues and brainstorming, you should right now be in the phase of this project where you're trying to determine what it is you're going to write about for this essay. So the essay asks you to identify some kind of problem and then propose a solution for it, fairly simple. So here's some things for you to consider as you're doing your brainstorming because it's very important that you choose wisely here. So one thing I would encourage you to do is think locally rather than globally because it's going to make your solution seem more credible. Um, there's a lot of problems in the world that we might like to see fixed. Say for instance, um, you know, you want to end um, a conflict in the Middle East or a hunger in Africa or something like that. And why those problems do need to be considered and, and hopefully one day solved, uh, over the course of a two to three page paper, it's, it's a little much for us to manage. And you're going to have more expertise about things that are happening close to you. So I would encourage you to think, uh, you know, about things um, that are happening at your workplace, at home, your school, within your community, um, maybe having to do with the environment here locally, um, and then also infrastructure, you know, especially our roads and bridges and things of that nature. There are a lot of common topics that come up in these problem solving essays, and I want you to be aware of some of those things that get written about a lot. This doesn't, I'm not trying to encourage or discourage you from writing about these yourself. I just want you to know that I get a lot of papers on these things. Roadways and traffic, um, hospitals and health care, youth programs. Youth programs is, is a big one, I think in particular just because most students in this class are going to be in the traditional college student age range. So they've had in the recent past experiences with um, you know, athletic programs in their hometowns or maybe, you know, some kind of uh, place for young people to get together socially, something along these lines that they feel could have been done better. And then another big one is safety and security, um, whether it has to do with, um, you know, how security measures are implemented in our schools or your neighborhood watch program, uh, all those types of things could be covered there. So, I mean, you might spot something within those recognizable topics that um, you already knew you wanted to do, and that's fine. Um, but certainly, I, and as always, I encourage you to you know, come up with something that hasn't been done before. Um, this final bullet here, I, I guess, really kind of wraps back up into the first one, think locally rather than globally for this paper. But choose a problem with a manageable scope. So I, I've got two examples here. One says recycling at work versus the scourge of poverty. So remember, again, this is a two to three page paper. And the one thing for sure is that I want your solution to seem realistic. Um, and in order to be realistic, it has to be manageable. There is no singular way that you can solve poverty, whether it's in your hometown or in southern Illinois or in the world at large, it's just too complex of a subject. Say you work at a restaurant and they don't recycle anything at that restaurant. There's probably reasons why they don't, but to suggest a solution for beginning a recycling program there would be actually a very realistic thing and something that might actually you know, be beneficial um, not only to the environment, but to your workplace as well. And so something like that's going to make a, a much better type of topic for this essay. All right, so again, important that you think about these things in advance. I would also encourage you to email me as you start to come up with a topic. If you're not sure if, you're, um, if you have the right feel for it, go ahead and just drop me an email, say this is what I'm thinking about, and um, I can provide you some feedback about your topic. Moving over to organizational strategy, the nice thing about the problem solving essay is that it's very formulaic. It's really just kind of laid out for you. Um, in fact, th this is really almost uh, an outline for a technical writing kind of document where you might see subheadings and things like that. In fact, I actually don't have any problem if you want to use subheadings 
um, for this particular assignment. All right, so um, again, trying. Uh, I'm always trying to keep with that uh, recognizable five paragraph pattern, even though I want to push you beyond five paragraphs, you do see here that I've sort of contained all this within five sections. So the intro, nothing really surprising here. Um, you know, we have to provide background information, statistics, facts, quotes, personal experience. I will allow some use of first person in, within this essay. I don't expect to see it in the problem, the solution, the troubleshooting, any of these areas. But if in the introduction you want to reference some kind of personal experience that gave you, you know, uh, a keen understanding of the problem, then I think that's acceptable here. Um, or anecdotes, which would be stories from other people that you've heard um, regarding the problem. The thesis for the problem solving essay should read like a call to action that hints at the solution. So obviously, you won't always be able to completely explain the solution in the thesis, nor am I asking you to, but um, you know, it needs to urge the taking of action um, by whatever entities are relevant there. Again, that kind of you know, depends on whether or not the problem's at work, school, home, within the community. But calling individuals or a group of people to action and then hinting at what that action should be. Section two, this is where you really examine the problem. Um, you need to identify the problem, obviously, and then really try to break down the problem. Um, give us more history on the problem. If you haven't done that up above, um, explain the current situation with the problem, and then if it were not um, dealt with, the potential future of the problem. Also, explore both causes and effects. What created this problem, what continues to feed the problem, and then what have been the negative consequences of the problem, and, and honestly, if there haven't been any positive outcomes because of this problem, um, then you ought to mention those as well. Um, you know, not everything is completely bad or completely good, and it's just it's more realistic and even persuasive to the reader um, if you're willing to acknowledge both sides. This could end up being one or two paragraphs here, I think, probably not more than that, but um, you know, if you really get into these issues uh, that I've just talked about here, certainly I would think more than one paragraph would be necessary. Part three is sort of the meat and potatoes here. This is the solution. Um, you propose your solution and you provide a step-by-step -step process for implementing it, um, starting from, you know, basically the time where it was agreed upon that this solution would be implemented all the way through to, you know, sustainability. It's been implemented. What do things look like in the future? Um, you know, this ought to be a very detail-oriented type of section. Don't just skim or gloss over this. Um, or you will certainly lose points uh, in terms of development on your essay. You also need to acknowledge that there are probably alternate solutions. Um, you know, your way isn't the only way. Acknowledge what those are and, and even consider, you know, possibly why some of those might not be as good as your solution. Uh, it sort of becomes a process of elimination at that point. And, and that's in particular why this definitely seems like a couple paragraphs here and maybe even three to get through your solution section. Um, I'm not entirely against within the solution section doing some like numbered or bulleted lists in there, especially for the step-by-step -step mm -hmm. part. If that seems more useful for you, you know, again, you can use subheadings in this essay. You can also use bullets and things of that nature. If that uh, um, appeals to you, it's not a requirement for your grade one way or the other. Part four I'm going to call the troubleshooting section. It does more than just troubleshoot though. Um, and this is a really important part of a problem solving essay because of the persuasive power of this part. One way we can always make our arguments more persuasive is by um, 
acknowledging the opposition. Um, and so <clears throat> my first recommendation here is to anticipate objections. Not everyone is going to um, like this solution. Who's not going to like it and why are they not going to like it? Justify the feasibility. In other words, the realism of your solution. Why is this, you know, especially, you know, or maybe possibly when weighed against alternate solutions, why does this one make the most sense? Um, why, why is it both, you know, economical and practical and, and all those types of things? Also, um, this is really the, the troubleshooting part of this is anticipate delays and difficulties. Um, you know, no project ever goes completely smoothly. Nothing ever runs, you know, on a perfect time table. So uh, make sure you anticipate why things might not go perfectly and even provide possible solutions to those problems. And that's, again, we're back to kind of one to two paragraphs. So, uh, you know, I really see this as being probably the most fully developed part of the essay in terms of length. Um, but you can start to count up your, your paragraphs here. So you could go one plus two, there's three, another three paragraphs, there, there's six, possibly two here. It's already eight paragraphs and we haven't even gotten to the conclusion yet, possibly, okay? So just make sure you keep an open mind about how much you develop this and and how the paragraphing works and looks. Finally, I, uh, you know, following my own advice, I have something for you to do here in the conclusion. I've saved something for the conclusion, and that's to analyze the benefits of your solution. So what are those long-term positive outcomes um, that will arise if your so solution is implemented? All right, just to recap, we looked at um, some pre-writing exercises, particularly, or brainstorming um, areas of focus, thinking locally, identifying issues and problems, recognizing common topics, and choosing something with a manageable scope. And then we have this fairly straightforward organizational strategy for a problem solving essay. Includes five parts. Um, anyway, that's it. Um, please let me know if you have any questions, and thanks a lot.